students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a great weekend so far. I hope that you're uh, enjoying a summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and winter if you're in the South Hemisphere. Welcome Harsh. Hi Bebek. Welcome Mandeep. Good to see many students in the class. Welcome Amrit. Good to see uh, members in the class as well. Uh, students, um, 30 minutes ago we finished our IELTS speaking part 2 class and now we're doing an IELTS speaking part 3 class. IELTS speaking part 2 was about an object that you use to stay safe. So it's no surprise that IELTS speaking part 3 is talking more about uh, safety equipment. And that's because uh, part two and part three are related. So uh, part three questions are connected to the part two topic. This is because the exam, the examiner, they're digging deeper into the information and they're checking to see how well you can talk about a specific uh, topic in detail. And this is where IELTS examiners often decide whether a candidate has been 6.5, 7, 7, 5, 8, or 9 level, uh, how well the candidate answers these part 3 questions. This uh, lesson, these materials, they are presented to you by aehelp.com. Uh, for academic IELTS success, visit us here. We use this website for speaking. We will use it today, lots actually, uh, to speak with students um, after we look at some strategies. And uh, you can join our premium package by clicking this uh, big red button there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Uh, and it doesn't cost much and then you basically have your textbooks for these live classes okay so to really get the most benefit from these live classes and to help us help you um, join uh, our premium package we are an official IELTS test registration center uh, certified agents we're IDP affiliates so you're in very good hands with us for the uh, general IELTS uh, use gieltshelp.com. It has this green background and again you can just click that big red button there uh, to join our premium IELTS package. We will use these websites in a few moments uh, to uh, use the chat interface for speaking. So it's not just typing but we will actually talk to students uh, from around the world and ask these part three questions. Um, you can use this uh, discount code pattern 20 for a 20% discount on the websites. You can also uh, use our apps. Our apps are um, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. The apps will link to the websites, okay? Um, Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help, follow our schedules, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the bell button so you know when we have the live classes, that way you get notifications, let YouTube send you the notification to know when the next live class is happening. We have regular live classes on YouTube and on other platforms. Um, if you have questions, if you're not sure about this, uh, just ask. Um, my email is adrian at aehelp.com and um, our next classes uh, after this one will be from Thursday all the way till Sunday uh, next week Sunday so we'll have classes on uh, Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday next week and our Sunday classes will be on light hall and on discord uh, light hall is um, uh, a really good platform for live learning. Okay, so if you want to do video chat, definitely uh, attend the live hall class for video chat IELTS speaking. Um, and Discord is really good for peer support. So to get help from other IELTS students, uh, we are an official partner with IELTS Prep. 
They are the biggest Discord channel for IELTS. We're their uh, official partner, so check us out there. Look for A Help. We got that Sunday event coming up there. Okay, everybody. Uh, so uh, lots of information. That's not just advertising. Okay, that's useful information for you and for your studies. So pay attention to that. All right. Okay. Um, so let's get into IELTS speaking part three. Now we just did speaking part two and I have a feeling that many of you were in that speaking part two class. I know many of our members were. That was speaking part two, an object I used to stay safe and IELTS speaking part two uh, was about uh, a seatbelt or the car seatbelt that I used to stay safe. That's what I spoke about. Uh, why am I telling you this, everyone? So why is it important to think about uh, part two before we look at the part three questions? So why am I telling you that right now? Okay, so Tatiana, Rajvir, Buya, Arjun, Sid, Shihab, Ghazi. Why am I telling you this? Why am I saying, the car seat belt that I used to stay safe is what we spoke about in part two. Okay. Amrit says, because we can use it as an example in part three. Absolutely, Amrit. Yeah, to make strong connections, right? So we get a better score. So you can increase your band score with this, we can call it a tip or a trick, but connect it, okay? So many people forget to connect part three to part two. They think about part three as if it's different from part two. Um, but the examiner tells you, I will ask you questions connected to the topic of part two. Let's begin part three. Like they literally use the word connected, connected to the topic of part two. Okay. So you can use this as examples uh, or as an example and make strong connections. What else? Why else do I really want to remember uh, my part two uh, speaking? Mittal, if you want to join online coaching, uh, the first best step is to join our premium IELTS package on our websites. Subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button so that you can get immersed in our program. We are the number one IELTS uh, YouTube course, okay? All right. So, um, another reason, don't forget this, is so, that I can remember my ideas from part two for part three. Okay, that's another reason that you need to, um, to think about your part two answer because your part two ideas, right? This is another big reason that you need to think of two or three good ideas so that you can use those ideas in part three. Now, remember from some of our other students that uh, uh, Ghazi spoke about vitamin C as an object that he uses to stay safe or to protect himself. Um, Baljeet uh, spoke about sunglasses. Uh, Zarina spoke about sunblock or sunscreen. They're the same, okay? All right, we also thought about some other objects um, like work boots, okay? A mask, medical mask. All right, uh, Royal Custom says an umbrella, sure, possible. Or a parasol. Okay, if it's from the sun, right? Good. Shahab says, you're amazing, my friend. Got overall 7.5 by watching your videos. Shahab, that's awesome. Um, Chayan Kip, yeah, absolutely. A hat or a cap. It's one of the most common items. 
that we use uh, to protect ourselves from the sun, from heat stroke, from sunstroke. Um, so keep the sun out of our eyes. Definitely keep our head cool. Um, a hat or a cap. So there are lots and lots of items uh, aside from a seat belt that we use to stay safe. On the water, we use a life jacket. Okay, as well. So there were lots of uh, gloves, yes. Um, lots of items that we use to stay safe that we thought about in part two. Okay, so remember to use these ideas. Don't forget about them. So many uh, times I see candidates, they get stuck in part three. And I just can't figure out why they aren't remembering uh, part two. No, it's not true. I can kind of. Uh, at times I feel like they get really nervous. And that's why you want to stay calm and confident so you don't forget good information. Okay, so uh, be calm and confident. In part three, so that you can remember the valuable information from part two and speak clearly. Okay, so lots of practice today. Without further ado, uh, let's get into IELTS speaking part three. Um, let's talk about safety equipment. So when you're finished with part two, the examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part two. Uh, let's continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about uh, safety equipment. And then they will start. Um, so what are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay. The reason you see double questions is because the second question is a follow-up, all right? So, <coughs> excuse me, give me a nice full sentence answer here. What are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? Answer, explanation example that's your structure okay tell me some of these items and tell me some explanations and give me some examples or give me an example i'm going to do the same for this first question so i will show you what a band eight band nine answer should look like or should sound like okay and then i will look at um what you have all right on a day-to-day -day basis okay so Okay, uh, there's my answer. Aside from a seat belt, which I had just spoken about, people use shoes, hats, and gloves to keep their bodies safe from injury every day. Uh, a hat is used to protect the head from heat stroke or getting wet during rainy days, and shoes are used to keep our feet safe from being injured by sharp objects on the ground. I always wear my cap and shoes when I go out. Okay. Now, students, this is speaking, right? So it's not reading, it's not listening, 
it's speaking, which means you're doing all of these, okay? So you're listening, you're reading, and importantly, you are speaking. So speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. Um, I use a, or I speak with, a uh, West Coast um, North American accent. Okay, you can call it Canadian, but it's not really Canadian. It's an American Canadian accent. It's a West Coast accent. So you will hear my English on the Western seaboard of Canada and the US. So you'll hear it in Vancouver, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, with some differences, but mostly the same. So speak and repeat. It's a very clear accent. It's the one that you hear in movies, of course. Hollywood is in Los Angeles, so you hear a lot of people in movies speak English like I do. Um, and uh, yeah, speak and repeat. Copy what I say. Copy how I say it. Okay, try to match my speed. So here we go. The question one more time. What are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? Aside from a seatbelt, which I had just spoken about, people use shoes, hats, and gloves to keep their bodies safe from injury every day. A hat is used to protect the head from heat stroke or getting wet during rainy days. And shoes are used to keep our feet safe from being injured by a sharp object on the ground. I always wear my cap and shoes when I go out. Fast, finish, example, done, band nine. Okay, that's how you do it. You answer, you explain, you give an example, connect, to part two, okay? All right, um, let's see, uh, Ghazi says, writes in this case, um, but we will be speaking uh, shortly here. Okay, so Ghazi writes, there are many, um, of safety tools. There are many safety tools that individuals use like uh, work boots, sunscreen, helmets, and some nutrient supplements like vitamin C, which I use for staying fit. Not for fitness. Fitness means working out. Use for uh, staying fit. Yep, and uh, remember that detail of the question, guys. Even I forgot it, and then I put it in at the end. So there are many safety tools that individuals use, like work boots, sunscreen, helmets, and some nutrient supplements like vitamin C, each and every day. I use, so I take supplements, or I take vitamins, as I mentioned, for staying fit. Okay. There. Ghazi, now we have a clear answer. So there are many safety tools that individuals use like work boots, sunscreen, helmets, and some nutrient supplements like vitamin C each and every day. I take vitamins, as I mentioned, for staying fit as our bodies need vitamins regularly on a daily basis, right? Okay, Irani. Uh, let's see what Irani says. Irani says, during the pandemic, masks, masks are one of the most important objects most people use and wear on a day-to-day -day basis, which uh, keeps them protected from getting effect infected against coronavirus infection. Okay, um, so the question, Irani, it's a good start, but the question is uh, types. Notice this, okay? Uh, this is plural, okay? So that means you need at least two items, okay? All 
All right, so you need at least two, uh, three items in your answer. Be very careful about that, students. So if the um, examiner is asking you for multiple uh, answers, make sure you're giving multiple answers. If you only give one, it starts to turn into an awkward conversation, okay? So give multiple answers. All right, so here you want to give at least a couple more. Irani, so during the pandemic, masks are one of the most important objects most people use and wear on a day-to-day -day basis, which keeps them protected from getting infected with the coronavirus. Um, with the coronavirus. Aside from this, uh, people also wear sunglasses. Uh, to protect their eyes every day and use hand sanitizer to keep their hands clean okay so multiple answers if it's asking you for uh, multiple responses all right Irani keep that in mind it's important I can give you a better band score when you recognize that the question is a plural and you're giving me a plural Okay, all right, so you're on the right track. This is what we want to do. And then um, the examiner will ask you related questions. So part three is very much kind of a, like a connected uh, type of conversation. So um, the next question can be something like, which of these is used more than any other? Okay, now hint, hint, does not need to be the truth. just needs to sound logical okay shoes would probably be a good pick but I could just say well I think a seat belt is used the most because uh, people put it on at least two or three times each day when they get in their cars. I use my seat belt hundreds of times uh, each month. Not necessarily the truth, but uh, you know, you can imagine it, right? Get in the car, clip it in, clip it out, go somewhere, get back in the car, clip it in, clip it out. You're constantly using your seat belt, right? So shoes, yep, yeah, also true. And if somebody says, well, I use my shoes more, I could say, well, it depends. If we think about the time, and yeah, maybe you have your shoes on more, but if we think about actually using the object, then the seat belt, you maybe uh, play with even more. So it doesn't matter. The examiner doesn't care about the truth. They're not gonna be like, I think you're wrong. I think you use your hat more than your seat belt. Um, they, they don't think that way. Okay, as long as it's believable, okay? If you say something strange, like uh, I use my knife the most to protect myself from criminals, that's kind of going to be weird, okay? So hopefully you don't live in a place where you have to use your knife on a daily basis to protect yourself, okay? All right, um, Amrit is saying something interesting. Amrit says, sometimes I forget to reflect the question. Yeah, it's not good, Amrit. You should reflect the question most of the time. Um, what Amrit is talking about is that when you have a question like, uh, what are the most common types um, that of items you use every day? You should say um, the items that I use every day or the items people use every day to keep safe are. So use the question. Amrit, that comes from practice. So if you keep practicing using the question, eventually your brain will kind of switch into using the question. Now, if you forget once or twice, it's not the end of the world, but you should always come back to using the question in your answer and paraphrasing it as much as possible. So using your own words as much as possible, okay? 
All right, uh, students, uh, let's really dig in. So let's, uh, let's do lots of practice. You know that for these final classes in the week, I really want to hear the voices of our viewers and use real exam type situations to give you band score estimates and to give you feedback on your speaking. So I will show you how to do this and we'll take volunteers to answer these questions. We've got lots of time. I'm going to move through volunteers at a steady pace. Um, Hesty and Dwee, I haven't forgotten my promise. So if you volunteer, I will be looking for you. And of course, this is an all chat class so everybody can volunteer and I encourage everybody to volunteer to try this so that you build your confidence, okay? There's no um, big mistakes. The only big mistake that you can do is not try, all right? That's the biggest mistake that you can make is not try because our brains are learning machines and as long as we try, we learn, we improve, and we're better for it, okay? So um, here's how you do your volunteering for speaking, okay? This is gonna be fun. It's a fun weekend activity. This is what you've been waiting for. It's not that new Top Gun movie. It's speaking IELTS on YouTube with Adrian. Woohoo! All right, so uh, go to aehelp.com. That's our website. That's where we have our chat interface. YouTube does not have a chat interface other than texting, typing, okay? Um, so we use our website here, aehelp.com. That is this website here with the blue background. Okay, let me, uh, it's aehelp.com. Okay, like that, aehelp.com, academicenglishhelp.com. And then you click on this big red button to join our premium package or to try this for free or use this function for free, the green button, the try demo button, okay? All right, um, and then you go to your My Student account. Your My Student account will look like this, okay? You will see computer-based practice exams, a full interactive uh, course. Uh, you will have exam books, study plans. Like I say, this is what we use for our live classes. We use our exam books here that you can download for the live classes. Uh, but right now, uh, we are going to use the uh, student partner speaking function. Let me change colors here. It's a little bit clearer. This one right there, boom, that right there, just floating above my head there. Okay. Uh, student partner speaking, you can use that to speak to other students also, okay? So uh, you click on student partner speaking. If you want to book a full IELTS speaking interview with me to get marked, you can do that with the yellow button, by the way. But right now we click on student partner speaking, accept the terms that you speak politely um, with respect and you will be redirected to this page here uh, where you can volunteer uh, to have a chat with me. Now, the way to do this, the way to have a chat with me is look for master. Um, when you find master, then click on the blue envelope that uh, Clara has here and send me a message. In your message, you should just type, hi, or I'd like to speak, or can I volunteer? Or, I'd like to volunteer, please. And then uh, I will uh, hopefully get to you and ask you some questions, give you some feedback. Okay, so a um, couple of students to start with here. Let's, uh, okay, Dwee is on the ball. Um, let's do this. So, okay, are you ready, Dwee? We did not have a chance last class, so we're going to give Dwee a chance, and then I will hop around. I will ask one or two questions from each person, okay? All right, Dwee, let's get going. Let's show how it's done. Hello? Hi, Dwee. Hi, sir. Good morning. 
It is 8 a.m. <laughs> quite early still. <laughs> yes, good okay. guess. Um, okay, Dwi, uh, can you remind me which country you are in? Um, I live in Indonesia. In Indonesia, I bet it's much later there. Is it 8 p.m.? Um, it's 10 p.m. o'clock. It's, it's 10 p.m. You're almost yes. in the next day. All right. Yes, of course. All right, Dwi. Well, let's do some speaking part three. Um, and uh, good for you for attending the classes hanging in there. Um, when I'm going through these questions and, and answers in this English, are you repeating the sentences? Uh, yeah, I tried for a couple uh, change. Okay. What you want to do to be really effective, Dwi, in these classes, and of course, as I'm telling you this, I'm telling this to everybody, is you want to be like as if I'm there with you in the room. So, you know, if you're sitting in a physical English class and the teacher says, okay, everybody, repeat after me, aside from a seatbelt, everybody has to repeat because if you're not repeating, then the teacher points at you and goes, Dwee, you're not repeating, you need to repeat me. So you need to feel like I'm there with you and if you're not doing the work, then I'm pointing at you. And making you repeat, okay? Oh my god! All right, that's yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. That's the best. <laughs> that's the best way to improve, right? So, one hundred and ten percent will always get you the best results. Okay, uh, Dwee, cool. So, um, let's do this. I will ask you a couple of questions. Give me an answer, explanation, example, and then I will give you feedback. Sounds good? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, that is the end of part two. We will now continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some questions um, related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about safety equipment. What are the most common types uh, of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, the most used item is definitely a helmet because in Indonesia, the motorcycle is the largest user than the car passenger or pedestrian. Mm, helmets, strong plastic materials, strong enough to protect the head of the user. Uh, if God forbid, they have an accident on their way and make them fall and hit the road. Um, certainly, I always use my helmet uh, whenever I go uh, in the far place to the far place like my office or the nearly supermarket, I always put them on me. Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain types of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Um, uh, like I said before, one of the uh, items to protect is a helmet. And when people not using the helmet on their head, they, uh, whenever they found a bump in the car or they got felt, uh, the head is in the danger because the the road is really hard and when the when they fell they must uh, probably uh, hurt their brain which is the most uh, mm, the most system in the humans part okay let's stop there okay. all right um, 6.5 would be my estimate although you should be getting a seven or even a 7.5, Dwee. Um, the reason why is you're speaking very quickly, your fluency is very high, but you are sacrificing coherence for, f for fluency, okay? So what that means is that uh, your clarity and your accuracy of the answer is dropping because you're speaking so fast. Um, I strongly recommend reducing your speed by about 15-20% even. Like you're, even for a native, uh, native speaker, you're sounding on the fast end. Like you're speaking okay. a little bit, like you're like you're rushing to answer the question. Okay, um, yes. you you shouldn't sound like you're rushing to answer the question. You should be speaking at a natural, comfortable speed. In fact, if somebody is speaking too fast, I've never said this before, but if somebody sounds like they're speaking too fast, the examiner might take a mark for coherence because. People can't understand someone who speaks so quickly. They can't follow their, um, e even if you're speaking perfect English. If you're speaking perfect uh, English, but you're speaking super fast, I would not give you a band nine because I would say, hey, an expert user doesn't try to speak so quickly that somebody doesn't understand them, right? So you have to be careful, do we, okay? So slower, right. slower. Slower is better, okay? Um, okay? Let me show you why specifically. 
So this first question I asked you, uh, which uh, or what are the most common types of objects that people use day to day? So that you said the most used item is definitely the uh, helmet. I couldn't even keep up with the typing, like it was impossible for me. I'd have to type so fast. So you said the most used item is definitely the helmet because in Indonesia, I corrected this here, you had quite a bit of awkward grammar because you were rushing, like you made, uh, for example, mistakes with word order as well as verb tenses. When you have a chance, um, listen back to this part of uh, today's class in the in YouTube and you will be like, oh my gosh, there's just so many like small grammar mistakes that are, yeah, we can understand. Like uh, it's not, the good news is they weren't so bad that I was like, what is she talking about? So I, I was like, okay, I get what you're talking about, but it's quite awkward with all these mistakes, okay? So um, so I corrected it a little bit here. So the most used item is definitely the helmet because in Indonesia, motorcycles are the most popular type of transportation, okay? Uh, okay. You said something a bit different that was, that was awkward. Now, at the beginning of today's class, um, it was Irani who did the same as you, where Irani said the most common uh, item that people use is the face mask. But this question is types uh, of I yes. objects. It's so, right so, yeah, objects and types are both plural, right? Um, so you need to give at least one more, um, not just the helmet, okay? Um, so you need to say something like the most used item is definitely the helmet, but people, uh, okay, and then let's go, because in Indonesia, motorcycles are the most popular type of uh, transportation, but people uh, also use uh, jackets and uh, special uh, shoes uh, to protect their bodies. Okay, so you can stay with the motorcycle. Uh, motorcycle yes. has lots of safety equipment, right? So shoes yes. to protect uh, their bodies in case of accident. Okay, so more than one item. Um, oh, and right. then uh, this next question, um, I jumped the which of these is more used because you answered that question. So I just went to this one, which types of problems can occur? And you said, like I said before, that was good, you connected. Um, and then here you said, and they fell, the head is in danger. Head is in danger is present tense and fell is past tense. So you're jumping around past, present, and it's kind of confusing. I can understand what you mean, but it's awkward and wrong grammar. So, and when they fall, okay. You're speaking about general situations, yeah. Dwee. So this is a person who can fall yesterday, who can fall today, who can fall tomorrow, right? Right. So in the general situation of falling off the bike. So definitely make sure when you're talking about a general situation, use the present tense, okay? So right. when they fall, uh, they their head is in danger. And then you said the most system in the human part. And I was like, what's going on? Um, and I get what you're saying. I, I, I do. So I understand that what you're trying to tell me is the head is the most important part of the yeah, human important. body. Right. But you're rushing. Yeah. You're, you're trying to speak so quickly that your tongue and your brain are not able to synchronize and keep up with each other. And it's coming out as this kind of jungle of words and ideas right so slow down okay breaks right. put some put some breaks on those words all right so the most vital part of the body is the head because it houses our brain okay or brain yeah um, so it is very important to protect it with a helmet all right, let's try some slower repetition, okay? So I'm going to repeat this answer and then just copy me nice and slow and steady, okay, Dwee? All right. Okay, here we go. Like I said before, one item that people use to protect themselves um, is the helmet because when they fall, their head is in danger. This is the most vital part of the body because it houses the brain, so it's important to protect it. 
Okay, go for it. Don't read. Just protect. Re repeat what I said. Okay. Okay. Um, like I said before, the the one item that uh, individual use to protect uh, themselves is um, the helmet. When they fell, uh, they ha they had is definitely in, in a danger. Um, not to mention that the most vital part of human body is the head because it's the houses of our brain so it's really really important to uh, protect it and uh, fire it from the any damage much better okay there i felt like you were thinking and really paying attention not just to what you're saying but how you're saying it and even though you were yeah let's say 20 percent slower 15 20 percent slower your coherence and clarity went way up and i'm sure if you look at the chat you might see some people going like yeah that was way more clear um, so even though it was slower, that would easily be a band seven, seven, five. Okay. So it's not about speed. It's mostly about coherence. Okay. So slower for you, Dwee, slower and, and more accurately. Okay. Okay. All Thank right. You so uh, you're very welcome, Dwee. Keep up the good practice. Yes, sir. Okay. It's a pleasure to meet you. Bye. Bye, Dwee. All right, that was Dwee. That was a great job. Uh, give Dwee a thumbs up. She did a fantastic job. Yeah, remember this, students. So some students think that if I'm not fluent, I'm getting a bad score. Well, here's some news for you. If you're not making any sense, you're definitely getting a bad score, whether or not you're fluent. Um, if you're not totally fluent, but you're making sense, you can still get a decent score, okay? You can't the other way. You can't get a decent score if you're not making sense, all right? Okay, thanks for the thumbs up, everyone. That's fantastic. All right, uh, Hesty, yes, I have not forgotten. Okay, are you ready? All right. So let's see if Hesty's here. Hopefully Hesty remembered too that I remembered, yes. All right, Hesty, let's do this. Yeah, hello, sir. Hi, Hesty. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. Thanks. All right. Pretty good is good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to ask you some part three questions. Um, Hesty, uh, before we begin, just so we can put a little bit more human behind you, uh, where are you right now in the world? What city? Which country? Uh, currently, I'm living in Indonesia, the same country like Dwi. I live in a Bandung city that is located in West Java province. Okay. It seems like um, IELTS is very popular in Indonesia. Can you tell us why that is? Uh, because uh, nowadays people really recognize the importance of education. So they need IELTS exam to pursue the higher study, go, I mean, to go abroad. So that's why IELTS quite popular in Indonesia it's good yeah I'm always um, I'm always very happy to learn of countries that um, recognize um, education as um, the focus point of developing society so I think that Indonesia has a bright future uh, in front of it um, because it's uh, focusing on education that's always good news uh, okay, um, Hesti, then let's get into uh, speaking part three. So I will ask you a question. Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. All right. <clears throat> Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain types of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Well, there are several types of problems that can occur if people don't use, uh, for example, ma a mask. Uh, the reason is because when we already know that face mask have been considered a first step to prevent the spread of disease. So if people don't use uh, face mask nowadays during the pandemic, uh, the probably all the people gonna got disease and after all people got the disease, or most of people got disease, uh, I can say that they don't do other activities. As a result, uh, the economy gonna be decreased because uh, people don't work or people don't study also. And the second thing, I think it gonna uh, reduce 
the health system in uh, the country. Uh, the, the reason because we already know that when ma most of people got disease, the health system gonna be so hard to improve. I mean, uh, the doctors, the nurse, and all the people need. How has uh, technology improved safety equipment? Um, okay, technology is really interesting to improve uh, the safety equipment. For example, we already know that some equipment such as glasses and mask and helmet, they are from, I mean, uh, they already, uh, they have been industrialized by some museums that provide uh, that provide those kind of protection in the large quantities. So when the, Im the technology is improving to produce those kind of protections, more people are able to use uh, the mask, uh, the helmet and other protections. Okay, that was good. All right, that was good. Um... You are you're definitely doing a couple of uh, great um, strategies uh, or applying some great strategies. Um, first of all, you uh, did exactly what Amrit was asking about earlier in the class. You did a really good job of using the question. So I said, which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain types of safety equipment? And then you were very clever. You, you thought, okay, well, let me just start that with the question so that I can focus. You said, well, there are several type, okay, watch your plurals, it's types, right? Make sure that S is a clear sound there. So, well, there are several types of problems if people don't use. Great start, that gets you focused, right? And then you said, for example, a mask. Uh, the reason is we already know that the face mask is used to prevent disease. Other people get the disease, they don't do certain activities, the economy will decrease. Okay, um, and then you kind of went on this huge war path of a speech, okay? Um, so don't do that, all right? Uh, otherwise, the examiner will interrupt you and your band eight, band nine, will fall back down to a band 7.5 because you're going blah 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 and it's not to be rude but the examiner's like i'm starting to get confused i was clear now i'm confused so over explaining is a problem in the ielts you don't want to over explain okay mm, okay. so once you've answered it just give an example and finish one really good way to avoid over explanation is with a quick example finish it's like it's like a kind of like a conclusion to your answer um, here when you started to say the second thing is it will reduce the whole system and you were starting to talk about systemic collapse um, you got into a very difficult sociological uh, philosophical concept that's why you started to get lost it started to make less sense. So you want to avoid that. It's IELTS. It's not uh, your university philosophy class, Hesty. Okay, so oh, okay. Don't, 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 don't go hardcore. All right, so let's take mm -hmm. out that whole part about systemic collapse. Um, instead, talk about the economy. How is the economy right now in Indonesia? Uh, I think the economy nowadays, um, if we compare um, in two years back, I mean in 2020, it is much better yeah. because uh, I mean the government doesn't need uh, to put more effort for the breaks, health. Breaks, Hesty, breaks, breaks, breaks. Oh, concise. sorry. Be concise, be concise. So again, you're. You, I love how you love to speak and you're really getting going, but it's the IELTS, okay? It's not your university <laughs> class, so keep it shorter. <laughs> so um, in Indonesia, okay? Okay. Uh, the economy is getting better because people wore masks oh. during COVID, okay? And that's the end, okay? That's your example. That's all, oh, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right, that's all I want to hear. <laughs> the rest of it, that okay, was, okay. we can talk about that over a hot cup of tea and we really get into it. But IELTS, you've got, you know, you've got, 12 to 15 minutes and you basically have to go through like 
anywhere between 18 to 25 questions within one IELTS speaking exam. So if you think about it, right, 18, 20 questions with question and answer in 12 to 15 minutes doesn't give you a lot of time per question, right? So you have to really just be concise, right? Um, so that's, that's what you want to focus on, okay? Let me repeat this answer and then copy after me. And so my main advice here for you is be concise. I think you would get a band score of seven for what you uh, answered, but I think if you're concise, you could easily get a band eight, okay? Mm, okay. All right, so be concise so you get that high band score. All right, let's practice this. So here we go. Uh, which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain kinds mm. of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Well, there are several types of problems if people don't use, for example, a mask. The reason is uh, we already know that the face mask is used to prevent disease. Um, so if they don't wear the face mask, they spread disease and then people do not go to work. The economy will suffer. In Indonesia, the economy is now getting better because people wore masks during COVID. All right, here we go. Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain kinds of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Well, there are several types of problems if people don't use, for example, mask. Uh, the reason is we already know that a face mask is used to prevent the disease. When other people get the disease, so the disease is going to be spreading, uh, they, then they, the activities going to be... Eh, sorry. Don't read to uh, speak. Then they don't go to work. Oh, yeah. Uh, they don't go to work, uh, so the economy will decrease. In Indonesia, the economy is getting better because people wore masks during COVID. Much better. Okay, if you say that without that little mistake at the activities or work, um, so let's just throw that mistake aside, that would easily be a band 8.5 even. Okay, that answer. So that's the kind of language that they're looking to, uh, for in the IELTS. Clear, concise answers that give enough detail to get that vocabulary mark, that grammar mark, and then the next question. Does that make sense, Hesti? Yes, okay. Thank you. All right. So what you want to do, Hesti, when you're practicing at home, and this is for everybody who feels they're kind of similar to Hesti, where they tend to go into these long-winded responses, is record yourself, listen to your answer, and if you feel like, oh, that answer is too long, then think about how can I say this shorter, and then say it again and shorten it, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Hesti, keep up the good studies, and we'll see you again in class, all right? Okay. All right. Bye, Hesti. All right. We've had a couple of volunteers from Indonesia give Hesti a thumbs up. Let's take somebody maybe from a different part of the world. Um, let's take Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman, you will have a chance now if you're still there. So are you ready? Okay. Uh, hang out, students. Stay in the class. We've got lots of time left still, and uh, we're ready to uh, chat. So here we go. Abdul Rahman, if you're there, let me know. Okay. Uh, the tips, the strategies, they're important for everybody. Okay. So if you're a person who speaks too short, speak a little longer. If you're a person who speaks really long, be concise. Okay. All right. Abdul. Abdul, I am calling you. Hopefully you hear it on your end. Okay, not sure what's going on with uh, your side of that call, Abdul, but check the system. Okay, check the system. Um, let's, uh, let's see if there are any uh, new uh, people. Um, I think we've spoken with Shub before, but let's see. Uh, Shub, are you ready? Let's see. Uh, students, make sure that you test the system on your end. Uh, the system definitely works best on PC, uh, but it should work on other devices and Apple as well. Test it. Test it with another uh, person who's in the chat. Send him a message and say, can we test this? All right, Shub. Hi, Shub. 
Hello, sir. How are you? I am very well. Awesome. And where are you calling from, Shab? I am from India, Vadodara, Gujarat. Okay, Gujarat. All right. So we've moved from Indonesia to India. Awesome, Shab. Why are you taking the IELTS exam? I am taking IELTS because I have to get master degrees from abroad. All right. Great. Well, let me help you with that goal. Um, let me ask you a couple of uh, questions and then uh, give me some nice answers. I'll give you some feedback, okay? Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk about acting responsibly. What should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? From my point of view, uh, individuals have to check equipments before doing dangerous activities such as uh, water sports or paragliding during the jump from the uh, airplane because it is, it, it is very risky without checking the parachute is properly working or not because it will it is the matter of our life why is it important to do this without doing this uh, an individual can be harm their self people often say that we are responsible for each other not just ourselves um, why is this do you agree with the statement yes I am agree with this statement and uh, want to give an example of a uh, uh, during vehicle driving if we are not uh, in fault uh, and uh, other driver drive a car fast and uh, unfortunately we both meet an accident this mistake are not ours but uh, we also uh, in this uh, accident so we harm ourselves both ourselves all right so um, you have some really uh, great ideas, uh, Shab. So um, uh, your answers are very clear. I can tell that you clearly understand what I'm asking you, which is fantastic, okay? Uh, that's yes. the right start. Now, um, your fluency needs to improve. So when you're giving me the answer, uh, your intonation and your fluency, they're just under band six. So band six would be considered fluent and um, you do need to be a little bit smoother and a little bit faster to be considered fluent. The reason yes. for that too is because it affects the coherence. So you're giving me good information, but I have to put the pieces together because you're going piece by piece by piece by piece, yes. and it's kind of hard for me to follow and then put it together. So here the examiner would give you like a band five, to 5.5 so for you it's uh, what you're saying is great and how you're saying it is okay you need to be a little bit faster okay so yes. I asked you what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities and you said from my point of view individuals should check equipment before doing dangerous activities like water sports or uh, paragliding okay um, Good, and then here we can say in this way, they can make sure, and I think you said something like this, sure that the equipment uh, is functioning as expected. It would be horrible uh, to have a parachute uh, fail by the way, yesterday we talked about uh, words from Arabic um, in yesterday's lesson and the word parachute comes from Arabic as well. Um, it would be horrible to have a parachute fail when paragliding. All right, so nice and smooth. All right, I'm going to repeat this answer and then try to copy my speed and my intonation, okay? 
So here we go. Uh, from my point of view, individuals should check equipment before doing dangerous activities like water sports or paragliding. In this way, they can be sure that the equipment is functioning as expected. It would be horrible to have a parachute fail when paragliding. Okay. From my point of view, individuals should check equipment before doing dangerous activities like water sports and paragliding. In this way, they can make sure that the equipment is functioning as expected. It would be horrible to have a parachute fail when paragliding. Okay, much better. So that's about the speed. Well, it doesn't have to be quite that fast. You can be even a little bit slower than that. Uh, but that's what you're going for, that continuous kind of smooth um, intonation of words okay uh, and yes. reading out loud like what you just did right now so lots of reading out loud and of course lots of speaking practice are great ways to achieve this okay okay thank you. all right <clears throat> good practice that was great keep it up thank you sir bye You're very welcome. Opportunity. absolutely that was Shab bye Shab bye all sir. right Shab in, in India <clears throat> excuse me my throat's a bit dry here we go All right, let's take another volunteer. Um, let's jump to uh, Devraj. Devraj, are you ready? Jumping around here, giving as many people a chance as possible. So Devraj, if you're there, let me know. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, Devraj. Hello. Uh, hi, Devraj. How are you? Hello, sir. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking. Uh, Devraj, uh, where are you right now? I'm from India. And where about today? Don't you remember me? I try uh, to remember as many people as I can, Devraj, but you're, I, I'm not. I also you know. volunteered in your, uh, your writing class uh, about uh, Canadian waters and farmers fishing. Ah, in the reading class, in the reading class, right, right, right. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, not writing, reading class, yeah. Okay, good. Um, yes, um, I kind of but, recall, I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of do, but not clearly. <laughs> <Devraj>. Okay, <laughs> I'm from India, I'm from Rajasthan. Rajasthan, okay. Um, so keep volunteering, and if you keep volunteering, I will remember, I'll probably remember you now for next week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, Devraj, let's get into some uh, questions, okay? Um, here okay. we go. Are you ready? Okay. Um, yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's talk about acting responsibly. People okay. often say that we are responsible for each other, not just ourselves. Why is this? And do you agree with the statement? Um, I absolutely agree that people are not solely responsible. Um, more than one people are responsible in any um, activity. Uh, I would like to uh, give an example regarding this. Like um, while driving a vehicle, if you had an accident and you have another person in your car or in your bike, he will too is in danger and by your fault or anyone's fault he will also be you know uh, responsible or he will also be affected um, by um, accident so i think um, accidents or or problems affect more than one people how can society encourage responsible behavior i'm sorry what how can society encourage responsible behavior? Um, well, society can encourage responsibilities by uh, te teaching individual um, to follow rules, to provide them guides. They can also um, share this information through, through different modes of uh, um, uh, like uh, radio, like in newspaper, people or individual can read this and make sure that uh, they are well updated about uh, responsibilities because if they are not updated, um, it's dangerous for their health and their life and other people as well. 
All right. Okay, not bad. The Raj, okay. not bad. All right, let me uh, fix it up a bit. Um, I would say that as is, you're looking at a band seven, okay. but you're fluent and you're somewhere between a fluent and a good speaker for sure. Okay, no question about it. So some examiners might say six five. Um, some okay. examiners might go as high as a seven. But I think you can. I think you should be able to get a seven on your exam if you fix your uh, word choice and you're thinking a little bit because I think that your vocabulary, your pronunciation, your fluency is easily seven or higher. Your grammar, there are a couple of awkward mistakes that you're making with plurals and singulars like individuals uh, instead of individual. Um, but your grammar is all right. It's, it's, it's a six, I would say. Grammatical range is maybe a bit higher. Um, let me, let me kind of pick apart your answer a little bit and then show you in more detail. So okay. uh, people often say that we are responsible for each other, not just ourselves. Why is this? Do you agree with this? Okay. So um, you said, I absolutely agree that people are not solely responsible um, just for themselves. I would finish this that way, just for themselves. Uh, by the way, good job using the question in your answer. Okay. Okay. That, you did that really well where you you, you immediately took the question and you paraphrased it. So you said solely responsible and that was good paraphrasing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the just for themselves, I'm adding that to be natural and for emphasis, but if you stopped it just slowly responsible, that's okay. And I like how you emphasize with absolutely. Okay. That's natural part of language. So that was good. Um, and then you said uh, more than one people are responsible, more than one person, not people, right? So that was a okay. plural singular as well. More than one person is responsible. Okay. Um, if you use the word one, it's a singular, okay? Yeah. And then you said in an activity, which is fine. Grammarly saying it's not, but it is okay. Um, so, and then you said, I would like to give an example. You got to be careful with that. Do you know why? Why? Because in the real aisle, if you start with that kind of a statement, like I would like to give an example, a lot of examiners will interrupt you. Like they'll just jump to the next question because the examiners often get students just like talking and talking and talking with no stopping. Um, and it usually starts with, I would like to give an example, <laughs> okay? So okay. so they don't want you to do that and then they just kind of jump. So instead of saying, I would like to give an example, um, just start with the example, okay? Okay. So start with the if a person is driving, okay? Don't, don't introduce your example, just give the example. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Yeah? Okay, now the other big no-no, and I, I know I bet a lot of students who are watching right now, when you did this, they cringed. So they were like, ooh, Adrian's going to talk about this for sure. Um, and whoever was thinking that in the chat, you were correct. I am going to talk about it because this is a very um, good example of this mistake. Uh, the you, you started talking about me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that yeah. is a big no-no. Um, even though we yeah. do this when we're speaking, you need to stay away from doing that, especially in this kind of a context, okay? Yes. Um, so even if we're not in an IELTS exam, even if we're just in a friendly chit chat, I would feel a bit awkward in this conversation because suddenly you're talking about me causing a road accident and it's taboo. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> now you laugh like, oh yeah, did I just tell the examiner that they're causing a road accident? <laughs> Why did I get that I'm band so six again? <laughs> um, you freaked out the examiner. You um, also mentioned this in part two, I remember. In last yeah, yeah, and especially in context that's taboo, like a taboo context. Like if you do drugs, you are going to end up crazy. <laughs> did I just tell the examiner that if they do drugs? Right, so, they, so you really have to be careful with content especially, right? So okay. um, if people, okay, if you want to be uh, more specific, you, you can say if motorists, Okay. A motorist is a person driving a car or a vehicle. If motorists are driving a vehicle and there's another person in their car, 
Okay, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Not my car. <laughs> I drive my kids to school. Come on, man. Um, all right, so if motorists are driving a vehicle uh, and there's another person in their car or on their bike, um, and they are, there were a lot of U's here, and they get into, uh, into an accident, uh, then multiple people get injured, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you gotta really pay attention to that. All right. Multiple people will be injured. And then you can give an example, and definitely you don't want to give an example about the exam, right? <laughs> so here you would say something like, um, uh, last week a person uh, crashed uh, into a bus uh, in Gujarat, so just keep it general, in Gujarat and injured several people okay so you can okay. just generalize the example right okay. um, and then you're sounding much much better okay okay all right um so here we go let me uh repeat the question um and then you repeat the answer after i say it so here we go people often say that we are responsible for each other not just ourselves uh why is this do you agree with this statement? I absolutely agree that people are not solely responsible just for themselves because our actions affect other people. Uh, more than one person is responsible in an activity. If motorists are driving a vehicle and there's another person in the car or on their bike and they get into an accident, multiple people will be injured. Last week a person crashed into a bus and several people were hurt. Uh, people often say that we are responsible for each other, not just ourselves. Why is this? Uh, I absolutely agree that people are not solely responsible just for themselves. Uh, more than one people is responsible in an activity. If motorists are driving a vehicle and there is another person in their car or on their bike, they get into an accident, multiple people will be injured. Last week, a person crashed into a bus in Gujarat and multiple I'm sorry, and several people get injured. Yeah, and once you start one way, just finish it, and multiple people were hurt. So that's fine. You don't you don't have to okay. backtrack. If it's not a mistake, don't worry about fixing it, right? It's okay. Okay. Um, all right, that was good. Yeah, and just be careful with that fossilized mistake. It's one person, not one people, one person. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, that was good. So um, good job. Um, and uh, yeah, just pay, uh, stay away from those communication mistakes and you'll get a really nice high mark okay. on your exam. Okay. Yeah, so. I would like to ask um, actually a question. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, actually, the thing is that I don't have much of content in my mind when someone asks a question. It's not in the test. Actually, it's in general if I'm communicating with a person in English and he or she asks a question. I don't have much of thing in my mind. So I just confuse. Not thing, but ideas. I don't have good ideas in my mind. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you do. Okay, You've got a beautiful brain and I promise you it's full of awesome information. Um, it's not the problem of not having it. You have it. Uh, believe me, you yeah. have it. It's accessing yeah. it. You need to access the information, right? So what you want to do is in the yeah. situation, um, be reflective. So think about, okay, uh, what is this person asking me? Why are they asking me this? How do I need to answer this? And then think about popular media. So think about like, okay, if I ask 10 people this question, right? Why are we responsible for each other? What would a lot of people say? And you came up with one good answer. We are responsible because uh, our actions affect others, such as when we are uh, driving. Or um, if we reflect back on, I think it was either Hesty or Dwee that said this answer about wearing the face mask during COVID. So if we are sick and we go out in public, then we make other people sick as well, right? So if you think about those common situations, then suddenly you'll start to get a lot of great ideas um, that will come into your head. So you just have to slow down, think, okay? And, and think okay. about popular situations. Um, there's a, a game show um, in the West here called Family Feud and the goal of the game show is to think of popular answers like they'll ask a question like what are 10 items people keep in their pockets and then somebody will say keys the other person will say wallet the person will say handkerchief and uh, that show is kind of a fun one to kind of get good ideas of popular 
answers to questions, okay? Um, it's okay. called Family Feud. I'll write it on the screen here. Um, and it's okay. kind of fun to watch. So Family Feud, and you can play along. Um, so when the host asks a question, like popular items you put into your pocket, um, then try to you know beat the contestants. So try to write down quickly some answers that you think would be uh, in the game, okay? Okay, okay. All right, so fun activity for everybody in the weekend. All right, Devraj, <laughs> have a great rest of your Saturday, Sunday. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Okay, bye for now. All right, that was Devraj. Yeah, Family Feud, check that out. You can probably see some episodes online and such. All right, okay, and it's fun. It's a fun one, especially if you're a family person. Um, okay, let's take somebody else. Let's let's move a little bit further to the east. Uh, let's uh, see if Omir Jean is here. Omir Jean, if you've been hanging out this whole time, you are studious and that's great. Are you ready? Omir Jean's probably like, he's, he's picking people left and right of me, but there you are. Bang. You're the first one in the list. Omir Jean says yes. All right. Oh, hello. Hi, Omir Jean. How are you? I am great. How is life in Kazakhstan? Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all right. Okay, um, so let's do this, uh, Omir Jean. You've been watching. I know you have. I can see that you were in the class. Uh, so I will ask you some questions. Give me some answers, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about safety equipment. Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain kinds of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Uh, can you repeat? Sure. Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain kinds of safety equipment in dangerous situations? Actually, there are many. Uh, uh, there are many things may, may happen. It everything depends on the situation. Like, uh, for example, uh, in building, uh, persons uh, uh, might be. Uh, oh my! Amir Jan, are you still there? Did we lose the connection? I hope you didn't pour a coffee on your keyboard. It sounded like sounded a little bit bad there. You just said, "Oh my," and then that's it. Somebody called you maybe if you're on your phone, I'm guessing. All right, let's just check back. Uh, yeah, Omer Jean suddenly disappeared. All right, well, we, maybe we'll come back to Omer Jean. Um, Omer Jean, just a quick uh, message here. Um, do not use the word things in your speaking. Okay, problems, difficulties, challenges, not things. Okay, Mazad, are you ready? Mazad is like, ah, oh, Omer Jan got a chance, but not me. Well, Mazad, Omer Jan's misfortune is your fortune as far as that goes. Let's uh, reach out to Mazad. I hope everything's well with you, by the way, Omer Jan. Yeah, good morning, sir. Hi, Mizad. How are you? Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. How are you? I am doing, I'm doing great. Good. Yeah. Um, Mizad, uh, where are you calling from? I'm from India. India. And we have spoken before, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, we spoke yesterday, sir. You gave me a true or false session. <laughs> right. Yes, that's why I remember your name, because I gave you those challenging questions. And you know what? I have tons of respect for yes. you because after that difficult session, you're back for more. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you're you so up, much. Up for the challenge. That's great. That's the right attitude. So never be discouraged um, with uh, with English, yes. right? So when you learn a language, it's like it's one of the the most important strategies is just never be discouraged, right? It, it, nobody understands a language perfectly. Nobody, not even an English professor. Right, so. so um, all right, let's do this, Mazad. I'm going to uh, ask you a couple of yeah. questions and um, give me some uh, some answers. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's talk about acting responsibly. Uh, what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? Uh, uh, people engaging in dangerous activities uh, should always 
have a check uh, with their safety equipment yeah uh, so if suppose if you are driving uh, you should have a check on your seat belt that you are wearing a seat belt as such and also uh, when you are driving uh, you need to check your brakes of your car that your brakes are properly functioning uh, so that is also uh, one kind of check which can keep you safe why is it important to do this i think uh, it is important not just for your own life safety purpose but also for others also so it acts as a social responsibility for the entire community okay and people should uh, 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 uh basically people should follow a sense of responsibility uh, towards others or uh, not just taking care of themselves but also playing a very important role in taking care of the entire society okay and so good, good 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 we'll stop there that was good all right good not bad not bad at all um seven band seven i would say seven going towards a seven mm -hmm. five but a little bit vague and you're making some of the same mistakes that Devraj made so uh, you also switch to the you right so you should check your seatbelt you should um, what if I don't drive a car what if I'm scared of cars and I never sit in a car um, right so uh, really avoid that you and again the way to do that is record your speaking um, check it and then um, fix it now here I asked you uh, what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities and you kind of gave me a similar answer um, as uh, I, I think it was Devraj um, people engaging in dangerous activities should always check their safety equipment and that's good fine okay so we check our safety equipment that's one answer right we had that answer earlier um, let's see if we can think of another answer so what else should a person do before they engage in a dangerous activity so I've checked my safety equipment safety equipment looks good what else can I do um, before I do a dangerous activity? Now, to, to help this, so I'm, I'm, I want to encourage everybody to think um, uh, dynamically before answering these questions. One way to think dynamically is think of specific examples, okay? So let's say that you are about to drive a race car for the first time. Now, of course, you're going to check your seatbelt. You're going to put it on um, before you drive this race car around the track. But you will probably do something else as well. So, you you know, you, you can in some places like Las Vegas, for example, but lots of places in Germany as well, you can rent race cars um, and um, you're going to check your safety equipment, but you will do something else in that situation. What else will you do before you jump into that car and start driving 200 kilometers an hour? I'll just check the, um, not just the brakes, but also the tires. Okay, but for, uh, let's forget about been, the equipment. Uh, properly. Let's forget about the equipment. So the equipment is good. Tires are good. Brakes are good. Okay. Seatbelt is good. You're going to do some, you're going to take some other steps before you engage in this dangerous activity. If you're skydiving, yeah. um, paragliding, bungee jumping, yeah. swimming, let's just okay. take, let's just take a simple one. You're swimming in the ocean. Okay, um, your swimming goggles are fine, your snorkel is fine, uh, your flippers are fine, your equipment is good. What else are you going to check before you jump in the water? There's some people oh, in the- I'll check myself that uh, I'll take a proper breed, I'll take a proper breath uh, before I jump. Yeah, so Apurva in uh, the chat is saying your physical fitness, so your own condition, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You're going to check your fitness level, right? If you're feeling like you're really tired or you're going to pass out, probably not a good idea. I'm not to comfortable. Do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's I'm not comfortable, I won't be going. Yeah, and then you can see yeah. Ghazi giving some good answers in the chat as well. So you're not just checking your own condition, you're not just checking your equipment, but you're also checking what else? You're checking before you go into the water, before you go driving, you're checking the conditions. Condition. 
right? The the environment, yeah. so the outside. So um, if I'm mm. visiting you in India and we go to the beach um, and there's a monsoon, mm. is it a good idea to go swimming? Yeah. No, it's not a good idea because <laughs> uh, monsoons are much, uh, uh, there are a lot of rains. So it would not be preferable to go to the beach. But my equipment is good. I checked my equipment, so... But it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, but because it the... is a stormy weather. <laughs> yes, but still, it is a stormy weather. Uh, then the equipments won't be mattering. Yeah. Um, so we check our conditions, yeah. or we check our surroundings. Same thing with a race car, right? Yeah. Um, you wouldn't drive a the race car. Conditions. Yeah. So you want to try and, and the surroundings, not just necessarily the weather. It could be another part of our surroundings. Like if I see uh, shark fins in the water. I probably won't go swimming with sharks, right? So I'll wait for the sharks to kind of go away, right? So I check my surroundings. That's another one that I do. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm going um, skydiving or if I'm driving a race car, I will also get the right mm. knowledge, right? So information, yeah. information about the activity. So this is kind of like... Um, the same uh, concept that I was uh, teaching to Devraj. So in the IELTS, to get those higher band scores, the band eight, band nine, especially where you're getting into the very good and expert level of English user, um, for those band eight, band nines, mm. content is important. So it's not just about using good grammar, it's not just about fluent English, but it's about including good content. And maybe yes. some people who are watching right now, Mazad, they're probably like, well, but Adrian, I don't need a band eight, I don't need a band nine, I just need a band seven, right? Well, here's the other side of this. If you don't have perfect grammar, if you don't have perfect vocabulary, but you have good ideas. So you say, well, before a person does a dangerous activity, they should check the environment, they should check the equipment, also they need to learn about the activity they're going to get a higher mark, even if it's not perfect grammar, because they have good coherence, good content. Mm. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, yes yeah. it makes sense. So the information is always important. The information supersedes the ability of yeah, speaking, right? right? Um, okay, yes, yes. so let's try this again. I think you can give me an even better answer this time now that we talked about it. And oh, by the way, um, mm. Uh, the trick that we're using here, the trick that I'm showing you, mm. is think about the specific situation. So if you think about skydiving, if you think about driving the car or swimming in the ocean, mm. then you can picture mm. what you're checking before you go into okay. the water, right? And then you can go, oh, okay, it's not just the okay. equipment, but it's the conditions, it's the okay. information, right? Am I a good mm. swimmer, right? Am I a strong swimmer? Should I be jumping in the ocean? All right, here we go. So. Um, mm. Uh, what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? Uh, well, I think uh, people should uh, consider uh, the personal conditions, uh, their surroundings, and uh, the information uh, regarding uh, before they are engaging in dangerous activities. If I take, for example, uh, well, I, if I'm going for swimming in a a swimming pool or swimming beach so I need to consider the climatic conditions uh, before I will uh, go for swimming uh, if it is a uh, uh, the conditions are not favorable on a particular day uh, the weather is not good as such uh, so I will try to avoid it uh, under a dangerous uh, situation okay, stop there stop there yeah that was perfect so you can smooth it out a little bit more and here is where you want to record your answer listen back see how you can make it even better and then record it again so for example with your response here when you're saying like uh, if I'm going to an outdoor swimming pool or the beach for swimming I have to check the weather also if I feel tired it's not the right time to go swimming as I could get into trouble mm. um, so you can add those little details and then stop so that's what you want to do but already you're making more sense you're giving better information and you're getting a better band score no surprise right so um, that's how you improve okay um, thank you so much uh, Mizad for uh, helping me uh, emphasize that point of uh, content okay uh, that's what we My want pleasure. to do all right Mizad have a great rest My of your pleasure. weekend yeah thank yeah, you you too have a great day sir take care bye bye awesome yeah, bye. bye Mizad so that was Mizad um, always ending up with uh, my tougher 
tougher kind of uh, lesson piece, but uh, important lesson pieces. So thank you, Masad. You get my last thumbs up of this week's um, live classes. Uh, students, uh, keep in mind, good content, good band scores. Okay. Uh, if I didn't get a chance to speak with you, uh, speak with other students. Keep using the chat, the interface. Talk to others. It's for everybody. You can talk to other people there, not just me. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, for lots more practice, lots more English to use this chat interface, sign up for our premium IELTS package. It's not a lot of money and you're supporting us. It helps us to support you. Uh, so gieltshelp.com, aehelp.com. Aehelp.com is for academic IELTS. gieltshelp.com is for general IELTS. Those two websites are connected. So like the chat, for example, that we were using, if you're on gieltshelp, you will see the same people that you will see on aehelp.com. So they're, they're intertwined. It's a really cool system. And then you get uh, practice exams, uh, you get videos, you get lots, lots more. Everybody who uses it is like, hey, that was great. All right, thank you uh, members for being with me. Thank you so much to all of our viewers. I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. You're all brilliant people, believe me. There is tons of information uh, up there floating around in our heads. Uh, we just need to get it out, right? We want to practice that. Keep up the good work, everyone, and see you in classes next week. I'm Adrian, signing out from Victoria. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.